Hey everybody, what's going on? KSA Chris here, Real Estate Blitz. Wanted to do something real quick. Uh, I posted up something yesterday about buyer broker agreements. It's become a new, it, it's not new at all in the real estate industry, but it's becoming a hotter topic with a lot of agents. And let me tell you why. A lot of agents are, uh, I hear the story over and over, and I just was in a mastermind group recently, and, and this is what came up. Um, I've been working with this buyer. This buyer ended up walking into an open house, and they ended up uh, writing an offer with this different agent instead of me. I'm offended. Uh, I didn't get paid, even though I've gave him a lot of energy. So, you know, agents are starting to want to do more buyer broker agreements. And in its basic form, this is what it basically is. It's saying, I'm going to work for you. I'm committing to you and giving you my time and my energy. And you in return are going to commit to me and say, if I buy something, I'm going to buy it through you since you've been giving me your time and energy. Um, so you, you have to view it from the agent's perspective. They're spending a whole lot of time. A lot of people don't really even see. You think you're just showing up, you're going out to look at a house, and you know, well, what did it take you? You just drove me out of here and showed me the house. It, there's so much more work that's going on in the background. Uh, the agent trying to find you the house, the agent calling out to the agents, the, the other agents, the listing agent, whoever listed the home. The agent actually sitting down and looking and doing valuations on that property prior to you seeing it. The agent going out and finding specifically what you're looking for. The agent giving you the energy to begin with to learn who you are, what you're available, the agent going out and finding you lending. Uh, there's a lot that's going on before that agent actually shows you house number one. Then you also have sometimes, you know, you go out and the agent shows you anywhere from three houses, 40 houses. I just talked to an agent the other day, uh, ended up showing 60 houses. And then that buyer ended up in going and buying another property that they found when they happened to walk into an open house with a different agent. Now imagine that. This guy has taken his energy, his time, and his money, has invested in you as the person buying a home. And they've taken you to 60 different properties and you just happen to see the one that you love and you had somebody else write the offer on that. So you, you have to understand, you're not paying the agent directly, but when the agent writes an offer for you, the person that listed that property is going to pay them for bringing you to that transaction. And in my personal opinion, if somebody, if you're working with somebody that you know, like, and trust, and they're doing that much energy and putting in that much action for you, you should be writing an offer through them. So I'll, I'm gonna tell you, that's why uh, a lot more agents are asking for broker buyer agreements from their clients. They're saying, look, I'm going to commit to you. I want you to commit to me. Um, our team personally, we don't do that. I, I'm not a huge supporter of buyer broker agreements. I understand why people are doing it. It's just we have a very different mentality on how we approach the business. And I'm a firm believer of education. If, if I start working with somebody and I say, I'm going to represent you as your agent, and uh, I'm gonna help you find a house that you wanna buy. If, if we aren't connecting to begin with, I'm not going to be offended if you go in and purchase a home through somebody else. Uh, so view it this way, my opinion. Uh, I've decided I'm going to buy a Ford Mustang. I'm gonna buy a Ford Mustang um, and you know what? I, I wanna go look around. There's, there's 10 different dealerships in my area. I wanna look around and find a Ford Mustang. Um, the First store I show up to, uh, KSA Chris Ford, right? Uh, I walk in there and I decide that I'm going to buy a Ford Mustang. And, uh, you know, I'm looking around. I start talking to the guy that's there, which, you know, there's a guy who walks up. They always go out of the way. How can I help you? I'm here to help you. And they start showing you all of these different Mustangs. Did he put energy into me? He absolutely did. And I, I talked to a guy. My wife is looking at a car right now. And, and, and he says, look, even if we don't have something that you want right now, um, we have a whole bunch of other dealerships. I can call other dealerships and I can find the car that you're looking for and, and, and have it here so you can test drive it and check it out. Um, so let's say that he does go and do that. Well, at the end of the day, if I go to a different dealership and I end up buying a Ford Mustang from a different guy that's there, am, am I being awful? Well, it depends on how you view it. Now, did the other guy give me a lot of energy? Yes. If I felt connected and committed to that individual because they built rapport with me and they really showed how they can add more value, they listened to me. I was talking to a buddy of mine, Chappie, the other day. And he, it's funny because he always likes and shares my stuff. <coughs> he went to, and I bring this up because he went to buy a Ford Mustang. This is a true story. He wanted to buy a Ford Mustang, ended up buying a Camaro. 
And I asked him, I says, well, how did that work out? He says, man, every Ford dealership that I went to, uh, I, I said, this is what I want. This is the color I'm looking for. This is what I want. And, and, and these guys kept running me around and showing me everything I didn't want. And it was almost insulting. I brought in my car to trade in and they kept trying to, well, you know, uh, how much do you think it's worth? And all this other sales stuff. And he says, look, I already did my research. I already had a price quote from CarMax. I, I knew how much my car was worth and what they were willing to take for it. I told them that up front. And they were still trying to yank me around. Then it was this and that. And well, you know, it's not the exact color you're looking for, but this one's pretty great. You might want to, and he says, I don't want to look at that. I told you what I wanted. All you had to do was introduce me. And that's how most home buyers are. Not all of them, but most of them. All you had to do was introduce me to what I was looking to purchase. And, and I would have purchased it. Like he was the easiest guy to work with, but nobody listened to him. And then they were trying to oversell him on everything. Like, and, and, and I talked about this with one of our agents recently. You made the team. You're on our team now, and you're trying to still sell me on why you should be here. You're already here. I'm here. I'm physically talking to you. You're a sales guy. You don't need to sell me anymore. I'm saying exactly what I want to get. So put it in front of me and sell me on that. Stop selling me on all the other stuff, right? So he finally just got fed up with it, and everybody he went to, he just didn't feel like he connected with. So they never took time to build rapport with this guy. They never took time to find out, well, why are you buying? And so, you know, just get to know the guy. He ended up stopping in a deal, different dealership because they had a, he didn't want a used car, he wanted a brand new one, but they had a used Mustang that looked like something he wanted. This guy says, here's a Mustang. Here's how much we'll give you for your car. You know what? We want to walk through the car first to make sure that that's what we can give you. But this is pretty much what we're going to give you. We want to look through it because there's no point in us moving forward to look at a car if we can't pay you what you're looking to get. So let's do that first. Just real blunt and up front. You know what you want. You already came through with the price. This is what we can do. We either can or can't beat it. So let me find out if we can beat it or not. Once we do that, here's what we got. By the way, there's something similar. I know you came here to look at this one, but there's something similar too. You may interest you. Sure enough, Chappie looked at it. He says, well, do you have it in this color? Do you have it this way? He says, as a matter of fact, I do. Hold on one second. I'm going to line up five different cars for you. And he did. He took the time and energy after getting to know the guy and was very straightforward. And just He was a professional. Lined up five different cars. Chappie picked out a new Camaro. Got a new Camaro. Done. Guy got a commission. So I don't personally like buyer broker agreements in our business. Uh, because I, if, if, if somebody ends up walking and going with a different agent, in my opinion, it's, it's the agent's fault that they did that. However, I understand why a lot of agents want to do buyer broker agreements. In fact, you know, it's, it's coached by a lot of different coaches that you must always do buyer broker agreements. Uh, we were in a broker brokerage a while back where they, were, they weren't making us, but they were over the top, highly encouraging. We always use buyer broker agreements. And, you know, I, I get it. I understand why you're putting in a lot of energy, a lot of time. You're asking somebody to commit to you. But in my opinion, when it comes to purchasing something like that, it's a free market. Uh, anybody can do whatever they want. And if you're into sales and your job is to sell people, my job is to help somebody find a home. They say, this is what I want to find. My job is not to show them 60 different houses. My job is, this is what you said you want. We're going to go look at three. We look at three. Okay, from one to ten. Where's this one? Well, this is a seven. Okay, great. What's good and what's bad? We go to the next one. From 1 to 10, where is this at? Well, this is like a 4. Okay, well, this is, why is it a 4? Like, what, 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 what was good and what was bad? Okay, so this one, this one's an 8. Why is this one an 8? Okay, so you like these things. Now, you know, the one that was actually a 7, just below it, it didn't have this, but if you look at the price difference, this is a $50,000 price difference. To get what you really wanted in this other one, it's going to cost you maybe $1,000. Maybe right? Or at least I get to walk away and say, you know, we didn't find you what you want today, but now I know exactly what you want and we're going to get you in there. And then, but I've built, I've taken time with that person. I've gotten to know that person. I know exactly what they're looking for. And then we're going to find you that dream house, or we're just going to tell you it ain't on the market yet. The other one, if they're going out and looking at open houses on the weekend and I'm not there to go and show them those houses, and they end up signing an agreement with somebody else. So I'll, I'll even tell you, before I was a real estate agent, before I was even in this business, this I'll tell you my story. I was working with an agent. Uh, we had bought our first house and sold our first house through her. We were looking for our second house. And it became frustrating for us because she kept telling me, this isn't the house for you. 
In fact, so much so that we wanted to put in an offer. Ended up finding out. We put in an offer, thought, so we thought. Didn't know that this was unethical and that it was illegal at the time because I wasn't in this business. But we wanted to write an offer for $420,000 on this house. And she insisted this was not the house that we wanted. Thing is, I knew what she didn't know. And I had kind of told her, but it wasn't her business. I had about $200,000 in cash that I was going to use to renovate this home. I was looking for a home that is in a specific condition. Well, there's mold. You don't want this house. Yes, I do. Write an offer. Please write an offer for $420,000. She said she did. She said she submitted it. It turns out that house sold for $390,000. Our offer never made it. I called the listing agent. Our offer never made it to him. Now, I ended up going and finding, and here's the thing. Every house that we went and looked at, None of those houses are the house that she actually showed us. She never put them in front of us. She kept showing us what we thought and maxing out our budget. Well, this is what you're able to spend. I'm going to push you to the brink. That's not what I'm looking for. You didn't hear me. She didn't listen to us. She didn't pay attention. She kept showing us stuff we didn't want. We kept asking her to show us houses that we found on Zillow and then would be offended by it. And then when we were there, talk bad about the property and why we shouldn't buy it instead of t letting us tell her what we think about the property. Ended up walking into the house that we own right now. She didn't want to go look at that house. She says, well, you know, I don't think that's the right house either. Okay, well, we want to go look at it. Well, I, I don't have time to go look at it with you. We told her when we were going to look at it. I don't have time. I'm not, not going to do it. Let's, let's try to do it a different day. I actually have a house that I want to show you. I have it listed. So we went and looked at the house anyways. Met the agent. Talked to the agent. Like the agent, he was fantastic. He listened to us. He says, you know, this is really what you're looking for. This is what you could do. You know, the yard is where it's at. Here's how much it would cost for this. You can actually put a guest house over here. We've already done the work. And says, you know what? I'm tired of wasting my time. We actually ended up writing an offer with that guy and moved into the house 30 days later. The other agent that we were working with got pissed, called us up, got all offended. She wanted to know, I'm going to call that agent, tell him he owes me money. And then I got angry. And, and again, this is before I was in the business. And I says, look, if you had listened to us, if you had shown up when I told you this is the house for us, if you had worked with us, we would have kept working with you. But you were awful. You didn't help us. You didn't communicate with us. You, you didn't even write a damn offer. I didn't even say anything because I was trying to be nice to you because I thought we were friends. But you didn't even submit the offer on the other house that we wanted and somebody else bought it. Our dream home. It was our dream home. Still is to this day. Kim and I, that's still our dream home. And we lost it. We lost it because of her. We still drive by it and look at it. That was our dream home. It's perfect for us. And because of you, we lost it. And you want me to give you loyalty? And then you're going to have the nerve to go after this agent that did listen to us and did it to help us out? You want to go after his money? You don't deserve that money. If I, if, if, if I were in the business, I would have reported her. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. That's where we're at right now. So long story short, we don't do buyer broker agreements. I think for the agents that do do them, I can understand and respect why they're doing them. Especially, here's the thing, a couple of the agents that I know that are doing them, they are hard working agents and they do listen. And they just want people to commit to them to give them their time. Um, I can respect that. But I would say for me personally, with my personality, I think buyer broker agreements work for certain personalities. I'm a driver personality and I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to sign an agreement with you just because you think I have to. Here's the thing. You either will perform or you won't. If you don't, I don't want to be stuck with you. Well, Chris, you know, the buyer broker agreement, and I've heard this. Well, you know, they could walk away anytime. It doesn't matter. So what is the truth? Buyer broker agreement, if I decide to buy a house through somebody else, they can't do anything with anyways. It's, it, the, 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 the ink's worth more than the paper that it's printed on. You see? So if it's not worth anything, what you're actually trying to do is trick somebody. You're tricking somebody. You're trying to trick them emotionally and mentally to saying, oh, I did a contract this person. I have to use them. And I think that's dirty. And I think it's crap. I can understand and respect, but I think it's crap. So if you go and buy it with somebody else anyways, what are you going to do to them? If the answer is nothing, then what good is it? So maybe you should just spend more time building rapport. So it is. You're basically asking somebody to commit to you on an emotional level because they wrote a contract um, to make sure that you get paid. I don't know. I, I'm just personally not a fan, but like I said, I can understand and respect why people do it.
Um, I, I'm sorry if I went really negative on this one, but I feel extremely strong about this subject. So this is what I would say. If you're a real estate agent and you're watching this, because I know a lot of agents watch this, um, if you absolutely hate everything I just said, dude, drop it in the comments down below. Uh, bash, bash away. Uh, throw in a ton of negative stuff and let me know how stupid I am. I had somebody do it recently. They're like, you should take a class in economics. And I'm like, well, actually, I could. And I did. I sent them all the information on the economics of why it was true, but that's another subject. Uh, if you hate what I'm saying, please put it in the comments. Let other people know how you feel. Because here's the thing, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. If you have something that's a valid argument against what I'm saying, hey, change my mind. I'd love to change it. And who knows, maybe I'll implement buyer broker agreements because you changed my mind. Um, if, 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 you want, if you're just a normal person watching this, I'm sorry if I was so negative. Uh, but I, I just not a, I'm not a fan. I, I can respect it. If you're doing a buyer broker agreement with somebody, I think it works well for certain personalities. But for a personality like mine, it's just not a fan. Um, but outside of that, uh, like, share, comment, please, and uh, go check out our YouTube page. Uh, just talked to. I met up with uh, our our escrow company. They're going to be jumping on with me. We're probably going to team up. The podcast should be coming out here pretty soon. So keep an eye for that. Thank you very much. Kept this to about 15 minutes. That's my goal. KSA Chris. KSA Chris with the Real Estate Blitz. Appreciate you. We'll talk to you all later. Have a good one.